Hey everybody, welcome back. So in my attempts to get a nice transparent or at least nicely translucent taillight lens for the for my old Jeep, link in the cards above for my previous attempts, I am now doing the Overture PETG transparent version. It's nicely transparent. It has been sitting here in my dryer for about four or five hours. And while I really don't think I need to dry PETG link in the cards above for my filament drying series because I did discover that transparency has a lot to do with dryness and I want to give this filament every chance to succeed at this I am drying out all of the filaments that I am going to be using to print taillight lenses out of so it has been in there for a while I've got my dry box what do I do with my dry print box there it is there's the dry print box I made Link in the cards to how I made that, too, if you're interested. And excuse the giant mess, I'm still recovering from our two-year-long house remodel. The house is finally back in shape, and now it's time for me to get my garage and workshop areas back in. But I am going to put the PETG transparent in my dry box, and we're going to take it inside, and we are going to see how well it prints the taillight lens. Hang with me. Be right back. Okay, just to bring you up to speed real quick, this is a setup I'm going to be printing on. This is my GTEC A10M dual filament mix printer. I am printing this directly from the dry box with a couple of desiccant pads in it. And the filament is coming out of the dry box through a Bowden tube. There is no, there is no facility on these dual gear extruders to attach a Bowden fitting to the back so it's just butted up against it. And yes, I have replaced the Titan clones extruder clones with these du ex um, Creality style dual gear extruders link in the cards to that above so we are going to be printing at the temps that they call for I have scraped the bed clean and put a nice fresh coating of hairspray on it this printer has the BL touch clone I gotta keep saying that clone so you guys don't think I'm intentionally using fake products on it so it will auto bed level and um I had good luck with this printer with the black PETG. That's what was in this side that I just took out. I have pumped 100 millimeters of the clear through it just to make sure all the black is gone. And I am going to print this lens. Okay, so let's take a look at what I managed to achieve with the Overture Transparent PETG. And sorry for the sound of the printer in the background. I've got a couple of things being printed for people, so we're just going to have to bear with it for now. So. After a, a couple of false starts like this one, I decided I better stop and tweak my settings before I wasted any more time in filament. So a user mentioned to me in the comments that he thought one of my problems with the um, PETG was lack of flow. So when I put those extruders on the the GTEC A10M, the dual gear extruders, I checked the um, I checked the steps per millimeter, and I, it was perfect. I just checked again and it was perfect again. So I don't know why the PETG seems to need more flow, but if you take a look at this one, and I meant to make these bigger, I'm sorry, and I didn't. This one is at 100% flow, and yeah, I broke it. But um, this isn't the first take of this video, by the way. If you see, the bottom is very, very rough. This is very similar to the problem I was having with the polycarbonate. I could get it to print good and be very sturdy, but I was getting these ground fine ground glass type surfaces so I decided to take his recommendation and I upped the flow and I went to 110 and you'll see all of a sudden my um, my bottom surface there got very very nice it's um a little bit flexy it seems to hold together better than the previous one but it's really nice and you'll notice that um how transparent this this stuff is here's something that might show it it is um it's crazy transparent, but it's like a frosted glass window. You move very far away and the definition goes away, but yeah, it's really transparent. I like it a lot. So I thought if 10% extra flow is better, maybe 20% extra flow will be even more better. So I tried 120 and this, yeah, 120. And you know what? It's even better. The bottom surface is just smooth as can be. The sides are nice. I mean, it is really nice, and it's even sturdier. 
but still has a little bit of flex to it. I'm very pleased with that. So I thought, you know, more better at 120, maybe even more better if we go to 130. And this is 130. And 130, you know, it's still pretty good here. I start to feel some ridges in at, the, at this top layer. It's not quite as smooth as it was at 120. But I'll tell you what, it looks good and it's as solid as a rock. So, you know what? Let's keep going until it stops printing nicely, right? Why not, you know? So, here is 140% flow. Now, at 140%, my bottom in here is even more ridged. And you'll notice that I'm getting some artifacting along the outside of this. I don't know if you can see that, but um, there's a little bit of artifacting along some of these. And, and the um, Z-hop is getting ugly. And in here... And there's a tiny little bit of elephant's foot at the bottom, not much, but thought, well, that still isn't that bad, so why don't we try 150? And this is 150% flow. And now you'll see there's really starting to be problems that show up. It's starting to get pretty ugly on the outside edges. The, um, the inside in here is very ridged, and um, it's as solid as a rock, though. So I decided that 120, wherever it went, here it is here, 100, that's not it. 120 was probably going to be my sweet spot. It is beautifully transparent. It's got a little bit of flex to it. None of that artifacting there. And I tell you, that surface in there is just, it's almost as smooth as the bottom that printed against the glass. So the first thing I did after that was I printed one of the, um, one of the taillights. This is the exact same design as the previous one. It is 0.32 layer height. It has two top layers, two bottom layers. I think there's about three millimeters of infill at 20%. I think eh, this might be 30% infill and it's all lines, top bottom layer and infill are lines. And it's really nice. I mean, it's super sturdy. It printed beautiful. It's trans easily transparent enough for a taillight. It's not as transparent as that thin stuff, but it diffuses the light from the taillight bulb really well. So then I thought to myself, if you like it that much, Let's try it by taking, by changing the, the lines from the top and the bottom of the infill to concentric. And let's see if that works any better. So I got this. And it um, kind of looks weird from this side, but from this side it actually looks pretty cool. Now, I don't really need these, I don't think, with the pattern that's, that's in, the, in the concentric lines of the infill in the top and bottom layer. They don't really seem to offer anything, and to be honest, this mounts in all four corners, so I'm not sure how super strong it really needs to be. So my next thought was, let's put this Overture Transparent PETG to the test. Let's get rid of the infill. Let's thin it down so I've only got two top layers, two bottom layers, no infill, and we're going to do concentric, and I'm going to get rid of these patterns. And that's this one. And i got to tell you, I really like it. It is, um, where'd that battery go? I lost it. It is, um, no, it's sitting right there. There it is. That's not it, but it'll do the same job. It's crazy transparent. I mean, crazy transparent close up. I mean, you can read that, you can read that right through it. It's crazy transparent. It's flexible. Layer adhesion is very good. So, um, I really like that. I'm going to go with these. I'm going to save these others and we're going to have another Arizona heat UV test with both these and with um, the ASA filament which is going to be maybe not the next video, maybe the one after that. We'll see. And um, I'm also going to try some, I tried 303 on the old ABS ones and it didn't seem to make a bit of difference. But we may try some other UV protectant sprays or UV protectant coatings and see if one of them doesn't give us some some minimal protection from the Arizona sun. And the ASA might be even better than this. We'll have to test that out in the sun as well. And I got a couple of short video clips, three short video clips with these three different lenses mounted on the Jeep with the taillights turned down kind of in the kind of at dusk coming up right after this. So hang on if you want to see what the different lenses look like. And um, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit notifications. And I will catch you guys the next time. Hang on for those videos.